allow us to tell you something that you might already know. Black holes suck. Get it? Because they literally pull things into it in a way that stretches them out to infinity and beyond. Seriously though, black holes are one of the many dangers of our universe, and scientists have been studying them for decades in order to see not just how they work, but how big they can get. And trust us when we say that they can get very big. If you still don't believe us, you'll want to see this new one found recently. Allow us to show you how the James Webb Space Telescope discovers a mini monster black hole. So let's get right to it, shall we? A newly discovered mini supermassive black hole could help reveal some of the secrets behind the biggest black holes in the cosmos. Researchers using NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory recently discovered a monstrous black hole that was buried in dust and gas in a dwarf galaxy according to a statement by the Chandra team. The black hole, which has about 200,000 times the mass of our sun, lies in the center of the dwarf galaxy MRK 462, and while it is enormous, it is one of the smallest supermassive black holes ever found. This black hole in MRK 462 is among the smallest of the supermassive or monster black holes. Jack Parker, a researcher at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire, who co-led the study identifying and studying this black hole, said in a statement, Black holes like this are notoriously hard to find. MRK 462's host galaxy only has several hundred million stars. While this may seem like a lot, our Milky Way galaxy has a few hundred billion stars. So this number classifies MRK 462 as a dwarf galaxy, according to the statement. Until now, the black hole has been obscured from our view, clouded by dust and gas in MRK 462. In a larger galaxy, scientists might be able to find a black hole by observing stars moving rapidly at a galaxy center, signs of the gravitational influence of a black hole. But that wouldn't be possible in a galaxy this small. Instead, the team was able to use Chandra to see the glowing X-rays being emitted from gas being sucked into the black hole. This is actually one of the first times that a black hole obscured by gas and dust in this way has been observed in a dwarf galaxy, according to the statement. Because buried black holes are even harder to detect than exposed ones, finding this example might mean there are a lot more dwarf galaxies out there with similar black holes. Study co-lead Ryan Hickox, also a researcher at Dartmouth, said in the same statement. This is important because it could help address a major concern in astrophysics. How did black holes get so big so early in the universe? The team hopes that this discovery could help to further the conversation around how supermassive black holes reached such incredible sizes so quickly in the early universe and enduring scientific mystery. There are a number of competing theories looking to explain how our universe's supermassive black holes could pack on weight quickly enough to reach the sizes seen in the early universe, as the Chandra statement puts it. Every galaxy is thought to have stellar mass black holes, but not many supermassive black holes have been confirmed to exist in dwarf galaxies. So discoveries such as this could help to explain their existence. We can't make strong conclusions from one example, but this result should encourage much more extensive searches for buried black holes in dwarf galaxies. Parker said about this discovery, we're excited about what we might learn. This work was presented January 10th at the 239th meeting of the American Astronomical Society meeting in Salt Lake City and as part of a virtual news conference. Granted, if they had the ability, they would have just taken everyone to see the black hole up close. But as noted, that would suck. Jokes aside, we did say the words supermassive black hole quite a bit there. But what exactly are those? Here's an explanation. A supermassive black hole is the largest type of black hole, with its mass being on the order of millions to billions of times the mass of the Sun. Black holes are a class of astronomical objects that have undergone gravitational collapse, leaving behind spheroidal regions of space from which nothing can escape, not even light. Observational evidence indicates that almost every large galaxy has a supermassive black hole at its center. For example, the Milky Way has a supermassive black hole in its galactic center, corresponding to Sagittarius A. Accretion of interstellar gas onto supermassive black holes is the process responsible for powering active galactic nuclei and quasars. Supermassive black holes have physical properties that clearly distinguish them from lower mass classifications. First, the tidal forces in the vicinity of the event horizon are significantly weaker for supermassive black holes. 
The tidal force on a body at a black hole's event horizon is inversely proportional to the square of the black hole's mass. The story of how supermassive black holes were found began with the investigation by Martin Schmidt of the radio source 3C273 in 1963. Initially, this was thought to be a star, but the spectrum proved puzzling. It was determined to be hydrogen emission lines that had been redshifted, indicating the object was moving away from the Earth. Hubble's law showed that the object was located several billion light years away and thus must be emitting the energy equivalent of hundreds of galaxies. The rate of light variations of the source dubbed a quasi-stellar object, or quasar, suggested the emitting region had a diameter of one parsec or less. Four such sources had been identified by 1964. In 1963, Fred Hoyle and W.A. Fowler proposed the existence of hydrogen-burning supermassive stars, SMS, as an explanation for the compact dimensions and high energy output of quasars. However, Richard Feynman noted stars above a certain critical mass are dynamically unstable and would collapse into a black hole, at least if they were non-rotating. Fowler then proposed that these supermassive stars would undergo a series of collapse and explosion oscillations, thereby explaining the energy output pattern. The origin of supermassive black holes remains an open field of research, which is why this discovery is so important as it might help shed some light, pun not intended, on the subject. The formation of a supermassive black hole requires a relatively small volume of highly dense matter having small angular momentum. Normally, the process of accretion involves transporting a large initial endowment of angular momentum outwards, and this appears to be the limiting factor in black hole growth. This is a major component of the theory of accretion disks. Gas accretion is the most efficient and also the most conspicuous way in which black holes grow. The majority of the mass growth of supermassive black holes is thought to occur through episodes of rapid gas accretion, which are observable as active galactic nuclei or quasars. Observations reveal that quasars were much more frequent when the universe was younger, indicating that supermassive black holes formed and grew early. A major constraining factor for theories of supermassive black hole formation is the observation of distant luminous quasars, which indicate that supermassive black holes of billions of solar masses had already formed when the universe was less than one billion years old. This suggests that supermassive black holes arose very early in the universe inside the first massive galaxies. Either way you look at it though, there's still a lot we don't know about them or just about black holes in general. That's why there are so many who are hopeful that the James Webb Telescope will be able to make more discoveries like this. Because it's easily the most powerful telescope that NASA has ever launched. And as a result of that, would be able to find things out about black holes that are incredible to discover such as this mini-monster. Granted, it would take many more finds in order to get the information needed to form true and definitive statements about black holes, but at the very least, it's helping. What's more, if we can find out more about where these supermassive black holes are, it can help us in determining where certain other things might be across the cosmos. But until that point, we just have to look at this new data and see what we can learn from it. So, what do you think? What do you think of this look at the James Webb Telescope and how it found a monster black hole? Are you amazed at the discovery, as well as the size of this black hole? Do you think that there are more monster black holes like this out there in the universe? What's the next big discovery for the James Webb Telescope? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.